Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Pardon me, I've got a bit of a sore throat. But my name's Dan, and I'm a developer advocate for Dialogflow and Actions on Google. And during this session, we're going to look at how you go about building an app for the Google Assistant. So let's start by introducing the Assistant platform. At Google, we believe the future is AI first. And we've been investing heavily in the areas of machine learning, speech recognition, and language understanding. So these things all come together in the Google Assistant. And it basically allows you to have a conversation with Google that helps you get things done. Because of these investments in AI, the conversation can be completely natural. You just use your voice, ask in a natural way, and the Assistant will help you. So what does this mean for a developer? Well, the Assistant platform has three parts. The first part is the device being used to interact with the Assistant. So it could be the mobile phone, Android Wear Watch, a Google Home smart speaker, or many other devices. And the Google Assistant is the conversation between the user and Google. They can get things done just by talking with the Assistant. And there are many things the user can do just by using the Assistant directly. But the third part, which is actions on Google, allows developers to extend the Assistant. So a developer can implement an Assistant app. And this is what we're going to focus on today. By the way, the Assistant is available in many different languages. We're launching new languages and locales all the time, so you can support many users in different languages all around the world. And we actually just announced support for Indian English. So how does an Assistant app work? Well, we built an example around a personal chef, which is an app that suggests recipes based on what you want. First, the user needs to invoke your app. So they say a phrase like, OK, Google, talk to personal chef. And the assistant will introduce your app. From this point onwards, the user is now talking to your app. Your app generates dialogue output, which is then spoken to the user. The user then makes requests. Your app processes it and replies back again. So the user has a two-way dialogue until the conversation is finished. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of this app called Personal Chef. So you may have seen this video before, but we're going to dive into it a little deeper today, or this afternoon. OK, Google, let me talk to Personal Chef. Sure, here's Personal Chef. Hi, I'm your Personal Chef. What are you in the mood for? Well, it's kind of cold outside, so I'd like something to warm me up, like a hot soup. And I want it fast. All right, what protein would you like to use? I have some chicken and also some canned tomatoes. OK, well, I think you should try the chicken tomato soup recipe I found on example.com. Hmm, sounds good to me. All right, so that demo conversation was actually quite complex. Wayne said cold, warm, and hot, all in the same sentence, but the app managed to capture the correct one. So could you imagine trying to write a regular expression or a parser to try and extract meaning out of this? There are so many difficult cases that it's basically impossible for anything that's not trivial. So let's see the various ways we could build this interaction. One option is to use the Conversation API and the Actions SDK. So your Assistant app receives a request containing the spoken text from the user as a string. Google handles the speech recognition for you, and then you pass the strings, generate a response, and Google handles speaking this back to the user. However, as we just mentioned, passing natural language can be really difficult. Fortunately, we provide tools that make this kind of thing really easy. Dialogflow is one of these, and it's a platform that makes it incredibly straightforward to build conversational experiences. You might not even have to write any code. So we're going to give you an overview of it today, and it's what most of you should use for implementing your own Assistant app. So what is Dialogflow? Basically, it provides an intuitive user interface for creating conversational experiences. You program in a few example sentences of things that a user might speak. And you can specify which values you want to get from the user. It then uses machine learning to understand the sentences and manage the conversation. So the key part here is that you no longer need to process raw strings. Dialogflow does this for you. You can see here where Dialogflow fits in. It handles the conversation invocation and fulfillment, like in the earlier diagram. Dialogflow handles the conversation for you. So once the user is talking to your Assistant app, they then start off with something that we call the user says phrase, like, find me a recipe for homemade cannoli. The 
the Google Assistant and Dialogflow then process this, find the appropriate intent to handle this phrase. The phrase is processed to extract entities, which are important pieces of information that you're looking for. And it then calls your webhook with these entities and the action name, and the webhook can then do something with it and generate a response that is spoken back to the user. So let's see a quick demo of what Dialogflow can do. All right, so in Dialogflow, we create an intent to represent each thing the user might want to do. In this case, we've built an intent that covers the user asking for a recipe. So here you can see how we've provided examples of different ways the user might express their desire for a recipe. These examples are used to train a machine learning model that can recognize what the user wants. So as we add examples, Dialogflow will automatically pick out important concepts that are mentioned by the user. The system understands many concepts by itself, but you can add custom domain-specific information, like in this case, recipe ingredients. So I'm going to add a couple of examples here. So how about, do you have any ideas for chicken salad? Or I want a quick starter. We can also mark this information as required, so our app will automatically ask the user if they didn't mention it. So I'm going to save here, and we're going to give it a try. So if I ask here, I want something with beef. We mentioned beef. But the agent also wants to know a vegetable and a dish type, so it's automatically asking for them. So let's add these here. Potato. And it asks, what kind of dish do you prefer? So let's say main course. All right, so now we could be suggested a recipe if the server looked this up on the back end. So it's amazing to be able to conduct a conversation dynamically on the fly without knowing ahead of time what the user will say. Um, once the intent has captured all of this information, it becomes available for you to use on your back end where you can make stuff happen and generate a response. And once we're done, it's only a few, few clicks to integrate the app with a load of different platforms. We want to integrate with Actions on Google, so we can just click here and load up the simulator to test it out. So this tool allows us to try out our action. So I can say, talk to my test app. And now we're talking to our actions. So I can say, let's try a recipe with chicken. Oops, and I misspelled it. And we'll have potato. And we want a main course. So it's the same app now available in the Actions on Google platform with just one click. So this is the workflow for building an action. It's super fast and simple, so you should definitely give it a try. All right, so that's the end of my demo. So let's talk a little bit more about the platform. All right, so we've heard about how apps for the Google Assistant are built, but how do we make sure we build apps that users will love? Google offers a ton of tools and features that will help you create a magical experience for your users. The most important thing to think about is the design of your app. Voice user interface design is a huge topic, and we don't have time to cover it in this presentation. But fortunately, Google's developer website has a ton of content available that can teach you how to think like a designer and build experiences that feel natural and fun to use. This should be the first place you go when you're designing a new app. Let's talk about some of the platform features you can use to delight your users. Your app can support simple audio output on both the Google Home or other smart speakers or a mobile handset. 
On a mobile device, you can also craft special responses that make the most of your device's screen. At the most basic, you can specify on-screen display text that is distinct from the spoken response. To guide the user in responding, you can provide suggestion chips. These supply suggested answers to a question that can be chosen with a single tap. And then basic cards allow you to display substantial on-screen information in the form of images, text, and a hyperlink. The text there doesn't have to be spoken out loud. You can also use lists and carousels to provide a visual selection mechanism for users. A carousel shows images, titles, and descriptions for a small number of options. And a list has capacity for substantially more, but the images are a lot smaller. You can also affect the way your app's speech sounds. You can play sound effects, alter the rate, pitch, and volume of speech, and control how words and numbers are read aloud. You can even layer background music and sounds, and you do all of this through SSML. You might also have a conversation that needs to know the user's name or location. So here's one example of finding a local bookstore, and you need to know the zip code. You can use our SDK to request permissions for name, course location, and precise location. And when you invoke this function, the assistant will ask the user for permission using your app's voice. If you'd like to link a user with their account on your own service, and you have an OAuth server, the Google Assistant can prompt users to link their account. At this point, the requesting user receives a card at the top of their Google Home app on their phone that provides a link to the login page. Once the user has completed the account linking flow on your web application, they can invoke your action, and your action can then authenticate calls to your services. It's worth noting that the OAuth endpoint needs to be one that you own rather than a third-party service. If your experience involves shopping or payments, we support rich transactions and allow you to accept user payments. The really cool part is that customers can use whatever payment information they have on file with Google, so payments can be super easy. There's no need to fumble around with a credit card or read numbers out loud. Transactions also supports a shopping cart, delivery options, order summary, and payments. And the user can see a history of all of their transactions. The Google Assistant also supports home automation via our smart home integration. Device makers can easily integrate their existing devices with our home graph. The home graph knows the state of all connected devices. So when you ask to dim the lights a little bit, it knows how to do that. So the user can make all kinds of requests, like make it warmer, turn off all the lights, how many lights are on. The possibilities are endless here, and we plan on adding many different device types very soon. We've also announced the Google Assistant SDK, which enables you to embed the Google Assistant into your own custom hardware projects. And we've created the AIY Projects Kit from Google, which provides a cardboard housing with a button, a speaker, and a microphone to wrap around a Raspberry Pi which uses the Google Assistant SDK. And at Google I.O. this year, we demoed a mocktails mixer from our partner Deep Local, which embeds the Google Assistant SDK as well. So you can walk up to the device, tell it the kind of drink you want, and it will mix it up for you. So you can really mix the Google Assistant into pretty much anything. So you've built a great app. Now what? How do you get it in front of users? The basic way to access your app is invoking it by name. So when you submit your app, you can provide a set of trigger phrases that the assistant will recognize as a request to speak to your app. As mentioned earlier, you can also support deep links, so users can ask, for your app for a particular, ask your app for a particular thing. In the long term, users will be able to find your app based on its specific capabilities. If they ask to play a game, the assistant will offer them a few options from the assistant apps available. We also have a directory where users can explore the apps that are on offer. Users don't have to install or pay for anything. All the apps are available just by asking for them by name. Finally, you can hyperlink to your app from just about anywhere. So you can share it in social media, promote it through your site or apps, or encourage press to drive traffic to your assistant app. If a user clicks the link, they'll be taken to a screen where they can read about your app and try it out. So hopefully you're feeling excited about building your first app for the Google Assistant, but how do you get started? Your first port of call should be the Google, Deve Google Developers page for actions on Google. 
you'll find guides to getting started with building your first app. With templates, you can actually build an app without writing any code. So you just fill out a spreadsheet with questions and answers, and you can create your own trivia, personality quiz, or flashcards game. And on our Code Lab site, we provide a variety of tutorials that will guide you through creating your first app for the Google Assistant using Dialogflow. We're also offering some incentives through our developer community program. So when you create and deploy your first app for the Google Assistant, we'll thank you with a free t-shirt plus $200 of Google Cloud credits every month for a year. If you'd like to dive deeper into the platform, there's a talk tomorrow on new features and advanced topics. So it'll show you how to do things like layering audio and sending push notifications to your users. I definitely recommend checking it out. And finally, when you want to discuss this with other developers, we have the Actions on Google developer community on Google+. We post regularly there to keep you up to date with the latest news, and we answer questions from developers. We also have a great community on Stack Overflow, so if you have technical questions, definitely post them there. And we're active on Twitter, too. So our team is going to be hanging out in the sandbox area, and we'd love for you to stop by and chat with us about building for the Google Assistant. And you should definitely attend the talk tomorrow, which is called What's New with the Google Assistant. So thank you for coming, and enjoy your time at GDD.